Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Let me tell you something. This is all about heart relationship. I'm talking about now. You know what? This is not for you tonight if you don't really love God. But if you really, really, really love God. And you know what? You probably wouldn't be here tonight. And those of you watching television, you would have already turned the program off probably if you didn't care anything about trying to get your life right with God. And the thing is, you can't get it right, but you can receive the righteousness of God. When we understand what God has done for us in Christ, we are set free from the law and the tyranny of the law and all the have tos and the shoulds and the oughts and the obligations and the comparisons and the competitions. And we're free to get up every day. And yes, every day we try to do the right thing, but not because we have to to get God to love us, just because we love him so much and appreciate what he's done for us so much that how could I possibly get up and do anything other than my best, even though I know my best is never going to be good enough. Whew. And can I tell you something? You can go to church for 30 years and never hear anything like this. Because I went for years and years and years and never heard anything like this. I knew doctrine. I knew the rules I was supposed to follow. And thankfully, I was in a church that really taught a great message about salvation through grace. But I didn't know that I was, had been made right with God through the blood of Christ. I didn't know that. I confessed every week that I was a poor, miserable sinner. You say, well, aren't you? Well, yes, I sin. You sin. And they are pretty poor, miserable sins. But my who, that's what I do, but my who is the righteousness of God in Christ. Not because I do things right. I sin. But I believe. I believe that Christ did for me what I could not do for myself. And I respond every day by trying to help people, by trying to be a good little girl, because I love God, not because I have to, because I want to. And you know what? When you start getting up every day and your whole heart is you want to please God, you really think he's going to be mad at you when you make little mistakes? I remember when my son, who's now 34, he thought he's going to help me one day. He was really little. And he got a bucket of water and got some soap in it somehow and got a rag and got out on the front porch and we had a big bay window out there and he slopped that stuff all over that window and <laughs> took a towel and dried it and came and found me. Mommy, mommy, I washed the window for you. <laughs> When I, he took me in there, he was so happy about his job, and I looked at it, and my heart just went. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, you're, that was so sweet of you. And then you go clean the mess up when they're not looking. <laughs> well, you know what? God cleans a lot of our messes up when we're not looking. While we're sleeping at night. Let me tell you something. This is all about heart relationship. I'm talking about, now you know what? This is not for you tonight if you don't really love God. But if you really, really, really love God. <laughs> and you know what? You probably wouldn't be here tonight. And those of you watching television, you would have already turned the program off probably if you didn't care anything about trying to get your life right with God. And the thing is, you can't get it right, but you can receive the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he that knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Every day of my life, I say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And I have made all kinds of religious people mad saying it, but the Bible says it, and I am going to say what the Word says. 
I am not righteous because I do everything right. My goodness, how could we do everything right? The Bible says in order to do that, you would have to not sin in thought, word, or deed. Well, I can't even get out of bed in the morning before I've already messed all that up. Thought, word, or deed. Thought. <laughs> My goodness. We need a Savior. <laughs> we desperately need a Savior. Now watch this. You're going to like this. Romans 3, 20. For no person... No person will be justified, made righteous, acquitted, and judged acceptable in his sight by observing the works prescribed by the law. Whatever that law is. You know what? You can make a law out of exercising. You can. You can make a law out of not eating certain things. And the thing is, when we make a law out of something for ourselves, then we always try to put our law on everybody else. And you know, one of the ways that you can tell when something's become a law for you, if you start having a judgmental attitude toward other people who aren't doing it. You know, sister super Christian, you try to have breakfast with her and She happens to be anointed by God as an intercessor, which is a gift. <laughs> and so she asks you, of course, about your prayer life. And you're a little new believer, and you pray in about three minutes every morning, and you're just so, you're just so happy about it. You just, <laughs> you and God are just getting on really good, and you just, man, you just got it going on. And she says, oh, you only pray Three minutes? <laughs> now, right away, you're going like, well, how long do you pray? <laughs> oh, well, I get up at five every morning and pray till nine. <laughs> so then... Maybe you do what I did when I heard somebody teach that. <laughs> Actually came to the church and taught how she prayed four hours every day. And she did. And God had gifted her to do it the day she was saved. She went and found a church and started praying and prayed four hours every day the rest of her life. Well, that was a gift just like I have to gift to stand up here and do what I'm doing. But I decided because she was doing it and she seemed powerful that I was going to do it. So I got me a clock, I got me a room, and I made an announcement. And that's where we make our biggest mistake. <laughs> I made an announcement. I am going to start praying four hours every day. Children, husband, do not darken that door. I will be in there being spiritual. And I had my clock there, and I mean, I prayed about everything that I knew how to pray about. I was walking, praying loud, praying. And I, I looked at my clock, and five minutes had gone by. I had three hours and 55 minutes left, and I didn't know anything else. So I decided to lay before the Lord. <laughs> and of course, I fell asleep. Because most people who get up at five do. Well, except now I do get up at five, and it's funny, now I get up at five because I want to go spend time with the Lord. But I, I, I will not tell people how much time I spend in prayer or how much time I, I will not tell you. Don't even bother asking me. You know why? Because. I don't want you to compare yourself to me or anybody else. I want you to get your own relationship with God. My goodness, the stuff that we do trying to earn and deserve something from God. And you know you got a problem 
when somebody that is much less spiritual than you gets what you've been believing God for. <laughs> Come on now. Well. <laughs> that person doesn't even go to early morning prayer meeting. And now they're getting married to the best looking guy in the church and I've been, <laughs> I've been praying my guts out for 20 years just to get a date. Hey, the minute we get mad at somebody who is getting blessed more than we are and we're mad about it because they're not as spiritual as we are, the law. Jesus, we're having fun. All right. Now, no person will be justified, made right, acquitted, and judged acceptable in his sight by observing the works prescribed by the law. For the real function of the law, the whole reason why God gave it, is to make men recognize and be conscious of sin. Not mere perception, but an acquaintance with sin which works toward repentance, faith, and holy character. So he, the only reason why God gave the law was to say, okay, here's what you have to do if you want to be acceptable to me by your works. Now, go ahead and try. Oh God, I'm so sick and tired of this. I don't know what's wrong. I, oh God, I give up. I just can't do this anymore. I tell you, God, I don't know what the problem is. I go to church, I give, I do everything they tell me to do and nothing's happening. God, I'm so sick and tired of this. I'm so sick and tired of this. God, you gotta do something. If you don't do something, I'm gonna give up. Sound like anybody you know? Oh man, I carried on like that for years and years and years. And one day I fell on the floor, got very dramatic. Which God don't care about any of that, by the way. It was like, I give up. I just give up. And so help me, I heard the Holy Spirit say rather loudly, really? I'm thinking, well, you sound kind of excited. And then, then God just, this, this was just what I knew. Joyce, the only time I really get to work in your life for those few moments in time when you've exhausted yourself to the point where you give up. Man, I gotta keep working out just to get up off of this floor. Verse 21, but now the righteousness of God has been revealed independently and altogether apart from the law although actually it is attested by the law and the prophets, namely the righteousness of God which comes by believing with personal trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ the Messiah and it is meant for all who believe for there is no distinction. Doesn't matter what side of the tracks you were born on, doesn't matter what your race is, doesn't matter what your family bloodline is, doesn't matter how much education you got. Come on. Since all have sinned and are falling short of the glory of God. I love that. It doesn't say all have sinned and have fallen. It says are falling. All have sinned and are falling short of the glory of God. All are justified and made upright and put in right standing with God. Come on, somebody give God a big praise. My, 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 my. Well, Joyce, shouldn't we try to do what's right? <laughs> and we just gotta keep going back here. Absolutely. And you know what? The closer you get to God, the more often and the quicker you're gonna realize when you do something wrong. But now here's what we have to understand. God does not condemn us, he convicts us. There is a big difference. And conviction is meant to lead us to repentance where condemnation 
pushes us down into the sin and overloads us with a burden that we can never do anything about. I mean, you should be glad that God has determined to never leave you alone. God loves you too much to leave you the way you are. The worst thing that could happen to me would be to be left the way I am right now. God, please keep working in my life and changing me. Not because I have to change any more to go to heaven. That's already a done deal. Bought and paid for. Honey, I got my ticket. His name is Jesus. Amen. You say, well, doesn't that kind of preaching just give people a license to sin? No. Nope. If anything, it makes you want to sin less than ever because you just are so in love with Jesus that you're like, now, you know, you may come back at another time and hear me talk about, you know, trying to do right. And, th and that's right. We need all the messages. We need them all. But what I'm telling you is self-righteousness is a sin. God hates self-righteousness and he despises what the Bible calls works of the flesh, which is me working, trying to earn or deserve something from God. Well, I deserve, well, I should have that. Well, why are you doing that for them and not for me? Well, I give more than they do and they got a raise at work and I didn't get one. <laughs> well, I, 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 I. Instead, we say, God, I trust you. I don't know, maybe this is a test. Maybe you're stretching me further than I would like to be stretched, but I do know that you love me and at the right time, in the right place, my breakthrough will come and no person on earth and no devil in hell can keep me from getting it. Because God is my source. Now, the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3 gives one of the best discourses that we've got in the Bible about true righteousness. Is anybody learning anything tonight? Are you, you getting anything? I mean, I hope you do read the Bible through every year, but even if you do, that doesn't make you any better than somebody who reads two verses a day. You may know a little more, so there might be some value in you knowing more, but you can read the whole thing through every year and not learn anything. Especially if you're just speed reading to get check marks. I've been alive too long. I know too much about this stuff. Because I've been through all of it. Philippians 3, 4 through 8. Though for myself, the apostle Paul is saying, I have at least grounds to rely on the flesh. Well, he starts out in verse 3 and says, put no confidence in the flesh. Then he says, now, as for me, I, I at least have grounds to rely on the flesh. If any other man considers that he has or seems to have reason to rely on the flesh and his physical and outward advantages, I have more. So Paul's saying, look, <laughs> I'm better than all of you. <laughs> and I mean, he's looking at it from the standpoint of following the law. He said, I, <laughs> I got all of you beat. Circumcised when I was eight days old, the race of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, the son of Hebrews, as to observing the law, I was of the party of the Pharisees. As to my zeal, I was a persecutor of the church. <laughs> He said, I was so religious, I was hating people that weren't doing it like I was. And by the law standards of righteousness, supposed, see, supposed justice, uprightness, and right standing with God, I was proven to be blameless and no fault was found in me. Verse 7, but whatever former things I had that might have been a gain to me, I have come now to consider as one combined loss for Christ's sake. So Paul said, in order to have this relationship with Christ, I've had to gather up all of my works and all of these things that I, that I work so hard to be proud of myself in, and I gotta be willing to get rid of all that and say none of that does me any good. You can have 20 degrees and I can have none. 
I got a bunch, but they were all given to me. <laughs> Which is the coolest way to get them, let me tell you. The point I'm trying to make is Paul said, I got it all. I had every degree. And he said, but it, I, I got to tell you that it's worth nothing. It's worth nothing as far as me being right with God. It might help you get a better job with a little more money, but it doesn't make you any more right with God than somebody who didn't get through the eighth grade. This is the point we're making. I'm not saying that those things aren't valuable, but what I am saying is it doesn't make us any more right with God. I am only right with God because I have put my faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. Now, yes, furthermore, I count everything as loss compared to the possession of the priceless privilege the overwhelming preciousness, the surpassing worth. Well, he gets long here. And the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, don't lose me, there's something good coming. And of progressively becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, of perceiving and recognizing. <laughs> I have lost everything, are you ready? And I consider it all to be mere rubbish. The Amplified Bible is being nice. Another translation says, dumb. In other words, <laughs> I consider it all to be poo poo. <laughs> now, I know your preachers normally don't do that kind of stuff, but I want you to get this. Paul's saying it's all just nothing but trash. It, it's useless. It's worthless. It's a stinking mess compared to the priceless privilege of knowing him, of knowing Christ as my Savior and my Lord. Somebody get up on your feet and shout. You know, there's nothing more freeing than really knowing who you are in Christ. And the more you understand about His goodness and His grace and what He's done for you, the more you want to live for Him and not live for yourself. This community likes boys, so they want their boys to go to school first. The girls, they don't have any, any value when it comes to education for them. So if they can get some money for her and not have the burden of having to care for her, it helps the family. The flags that you see on the homes over my shoulder represent a long-standing tradition that is very difficult on girls. As soon as a very young girl reaches puberty and she's of childbearing years, you'll see these flags above their houses representing the fact that a young girl is available to a man, essentially on the market, up for sale. And at that point, her life changes dramatically. So what they do is they take him out of school and they'll actually go through different activities, teaching them how to cook, how to be a, a wife in the, in the home. But part of it is also how to please a man. And that's through, you know, normal things in the house, but also sexually. So they teach them different things about sexuality and so on. So we are doing anything that we can to help people understand the value of girls. That's the key. And helping these girls by taking them into a program <laughs> called Imagine Hope. If they would live with us for six months and we would have devotions, lead them to the Lord, really mentor them in how to be a godly woman, 
and then at the same time teach them how to do some skills, basic things like jewelry making or whatever it is that they can have some kind of an income that they can bring to their families. This is a good hat. Were you afraid when you thought that you were going to have to be married? Some of my friends, they are already married now, but they are used to suffer in that marriage. So if myself, I was afraid to be married while I'm still young, but because of this program, my mom, she didn't take me to the marriage, but she bring me here so that I can proceed with my education, so that I can help her in future change our situation. I, I'm so grateful. I wish I could bring everyone here and let them see the impact of what's happening. Um, and I'm grateful for it because we should give and we should give to those that we don't benefit us. And I think that's what Hand of Hope does and, and we're grateful for that. We are helping young women like this all over the world. Help us to guide, restore, and love young girls. Your designated gift today, if you choose, can go to Project Girl. Or you can give toward water. You can give toward feeding. And do something that you know will make a difference.